Mainly we had the short courses. Short courses running from one week to three months. But then it developed into a fully fledged college offering certificate courses. And up to now we offer diploma uh, courses as well. So at the moment we have diploma courses, certificate courses and short courses mainly for the farmers. Diploma and certificate courses focus on the youth those who have completed their O level or Form 4 and now they want to take agriculture as a, a career. So that's great. And now maybe my question would be, currently we're moving in a, in a valley and let's say the weather is very erratic and there's this concept of climate change. I don't know how you've tuned your, your programs to, to fit adaptation and mitigation of climate change, especially now that you major in agriculture. Thank you very much. Uh, since 1986, an evaluation was done at this college by institutions or by members of institutions from Kenya and from outside Kenya, and that was to evaluate an earlier approach to farming, which was high input, high output agriculture. So from 1986, it was realized that that form of agriculture cannot help the farmers because uh, in the African culture or in Kenya, to be specific, we divide land based on the number of sons that we have per household. So the land is diminishing. And with that, the concept of sustainable agriculture evolved and also bearing in mind that issues to do with environmental degradation were also coming up. For example, the international workshop, the UN workshop that was held in Stockholm in 1972. It gave some highlights on how the environment was being degraded. So in, from 1986, the college, uh, the college has taken up the strategy of sustainable agriculture, and that is what we promote. I will be able to share with you the principles of sustainable agriculture, because those principles ensure us that we take care of the environment that we take care of the biodiversity so that we can live in a better world, in a better environment. So, so that uh, my viewers can be able to get a chance to get a pen to note, maybe we we'll first focus on something different a bit, and then we are going to come back to the principles of sustainable agriculture, because I believe it's very, it's of interest to many of us in this country. Uh, now, maybe would you list maybe some of the, courses in highlight and is it open to people from different areas or do you serve this locality? Thank you very much. Our courses, we can say they are international. We get students from Kenya, from Tanzania, Uganda, South Sudan, and even at times we get students from Lesotho and from Zambia. So they are international. We have the certificate course which runs for 16 months certificate in sustainable agriculture for rural development and then we have diploma in sustainable agriculture for rural development running for two and a half years we have a certificate course in apiculture beekeeping running for one year and they are all international uh, courses they are recognized and accredited by the government of kenya so our students sit for national exams they sit for NEC and uh, at level five and level four, they sit for Tibet CDAC examinations. So, thank you so much. Now, uh, we're in a country where maybe employment is becoming a challenge. And we have seen most of the institutions gearing their courses towards just giving the skills and leaving the, 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 the learners to, to go and hustle for themselves. I don't know, maybe because this is agricultural, institution and most of the agricultural courses means it's something that needs practice. I don't know what steps you've done as a, as a learning institution to equip the learners not only to see the courses as getting skills but practicing and starting enterprises. I don't know if also within the institution you have enterprises where maybe the learners can learn the art. Thank you very much. Our courses are competence based. We have taken up the approach of competence-based 
uh, training and uh, learning. So in our courses, we ensure that the students, yes, get skills, but they also get knowledge, and we train them to have a positive attitude towards agriculture. In our curricula for sustainable agriculture, for rural development, we have, uh, yes, the key skills like in crops and livestock, but we also train in businesses so that this person can be able to start enterprises. And apart from training, we have enterprises on the farm where the student will keep on learning while he or she is here in the college. We have dairy farming, we have uh, horticulture, we have poultry, we have piggery, we have beekeeping as an enterprise within the college, we have a tree nursery. So these uh, enterprises, while they generate income for the college, there are also facilities for students to learn. Have you ever heard of Pakchong One? This is the best nature grass for the dairy cow. For more information, contact us on the number below. Pakchong One, the best of the best. Yes, we are dignified. That's great. It's so it's awesome to hear this from you. And I believe you being the head, you you always ensuring that you are your staff is motivated to ensure that these goals are met. And that's why I feel encouraged to, to welcome people here for boot camps and the short courses so that they can learn this all here at Balaka College. So I'd want us to maybe understand the, the principles. I can see them there, sustainable agricultural principles. Maybe you can maybe highlight them and then you can also tell us maybe how is the adoption? How is the adoption in the people that you've engaged with, especially in your outreach programs? Thank you very much. We have eight uh, principles that we believe if farmers are adhering to these principles, then we can say yes, they are practicing sustainable agriculture. Number one is soil fertility. For us to be able to have an agriculture this year, 50 years to come and 100 years to come, then we have to maintain our soils. We have to ensure that the soils that we use are not depleted. How can we do that? By ensuring that we enhance the soil nutrients. And we can do that by using what comes out from the animals as waste. We can also decompose the uh, crop residues and maintain our soil fertility. We also need to, uh, we need to control soil erosion. If we control soil erosion, we still maintain our topsoil. Those are some of the measures that we can use to enhance our soil fertility. Number two principle is natural resource management. Managing the resources that we have, the God-given resources. And an example of this, we have water. How do we utilize this water? How do we manage this water? Biodiversity is another uh, natural resource. Sure. Because, for example, we require insects like the bees to be able to pollinate the crops mm -hmm. so that we have better production. So taking care of the biodiversity, the richness of the living organisms that we have on Earth. Then number three, yes, we are looking at biodiversity, which I have uh, explained partly. Yeah. And number four is integrated pest management. Uh, if you look at the world today, you realize that uh, there is so much pollution that is taking place because uh, when people, uh, when the crops are invested by pests, what people run for are the pesticides. Mm. But these are destroying the environment. So in our case here, we embrace integrated pest management. Let us use uh, the cultural methods. For example, we can do uprooting. If we realize that there is one plant in the farm that is affected by a disease, we simply uproot that plant. We can also decide to use a biological means. For example, we have uh, pests that are good and pests that destroy. So you can get those pests that are good for the environment or good for the people to be able to feed on those destructive pests. And that will not harm the environment. So that pesticides remain as the last solution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that way we'll take care of the environment. 
maybe a question yeah. would with this integrated pest management yeah. i've seen out of climate change we, ha we have now very new very new maybe in maybe pests which farmers were not used to could it be that this integrated pest management would help us to adapt for example for armyworm was not a common threat yes. some years back yes. but currently it's one of the the very dangerous or impediments of agriculture would you say be, like if we really adopt this integrated pest management would be able to produce healthy healthy foods yes that is very true because by reducing the residues of chemicals on plants on foods then we'll be able to feed on foods that are safe and healthy foods that we are sure are not going to harm our bodies and even with the new pests like armyworms the farmers are even doing their own small research and from a few farmers i realized that they simply suffocate that pest and this pest dies by using either uh, either ash or soil itself they simply take the soil and fill on top of the maize and then uh, that soil will suffocate that pest utilize in meeting their needs and their aspirations thank you so thank you so much so to our viewers we are concluding our tour at balaka college i believe you've learned a lot and that's why i'm telling you to choose kilimo fida tv to be your number one for the information are you tired jail no. ah you can be wonderful don't be tired you have to bring this information for farmers so maybe until next time i was your one of your hosts bikimani and now i had you over to the senior jail the host oh wow wow leondo imekuwa ile siku actually for me i'm not tired maybe my co-host is tired yeah don't forget to follow our videos we've tackled on organic farming the most important part we've tackled another one on dairy and the best best on apiculture beekeeping i've been your host jail liala kindly subscribe comment and share actually and it's which institution Balaka College of Agriculture. Yeah, Balaka College of Agriculture is the best agricultural institution and it has short term and long term courses. Actually, students, I encourage you to visit Balaka. Yeah, it has been a nice day. So, until next time, bye. <laughs>